Um, things are just going phenomenally well this morning. Uh, we have confirmed Channel 15 News is coming. The Arizona Republic is coming to cover it. And I just heard from Channel 12 News who is coming. Uh, the mayor of Scottsdale, Mayor Manross, is coming to witness this. A uh, couple of school board members, a lot of the parents of the children who will be talking. Our only real glitch was that one of our children who was scheduled to talk came down with the chicken pox. So we've had to make one quick um, substitution of Bailey, but Bailey has to say that his name is Alex because that's the way it's been scripted to the astronauts. So um, everything is right on track. The, the video is working. We have a, a director of technology here working on this. The equipment is working, we've tested it out, and sending and receiving the information, and the uh, space shuttle has just come onto the computer monitor, and so it, it's coming, and we're ready. And uh, children should be arriving any minute, and we'll be ready to go. The uh, azimuth and elevation antenna, the Aggie antenna on the roof of the school, is right now pre-positioned to sitting right on the horizon, pointing to where the space station is going to peak above the horizon in, in about 20 minutes. And as soon as it uh, acquires a signal, it will uh, use the software in the computer to track the, in the antenna all the way up over our head and all the way down to the other side of the horizon. And it's an automatic tracking by the computer and the NOVA software. And you can see the, the, the yellow line is the ground path as, it, uh, as the space station right now is in the, the white circle as it's approaching uh, the United States. As soon as that white circle is, uh, touches Scottsdale in the school, that's when we should acquire the, uh, the space station and two-way contact will begin. Uh, adjusting the primary and backup frequencies, testing them, verifying that they both work on both radios. We have duplicate uh, setups here, the primary radio and a backup radio. And we have a backup antenna on the roof, so that if something goes wrong with one, we immediately switch over to the other. And this is the backup radio over here, having, prim having primary and secondary channels. NA1SS and A1SS, this is KA7SKY. NA1SS and A1SS, this is KA7SKY, over. Well, Mike, thank you and welcome. Shall we begin with our questions? Yes, it's a great pleasure to be talking to your students at the Lawrence Sky Elementary School today. Go ahead. My name is Andy. Why are you chosen for Expedition 8? Over. Andy, I don't really know. There are many factors. One was that I had already been an experienced astronaut and had flown a long duration flight on the space station here. And as a result, that gave me qualifications to become the commander of Expedition 8. Over. My name is Taylor. What did it feel like when you launched? Over. 
Taylor, the very first time you launch on the space shuttle, you are absolutely surprised and shocked. It's very, very rough, like being in a car with a wheel that's blown. On the space, uh, on, the, on the Soyuz rocket, the Russian rocket, it's a smoother ride, but it also has the same feeling at the end, like the shuttle, where it pushes down on your chest, it's like having somebody sitting on your chest. After eight minutes, it's all over, and then you're floating. My name is Adam. What is? Wait. What did you do to prepare for working with people from other countries? Over. Adam, that's a great question. Adam, I had to think about what it might be like to meet someone in another country meeting Americans, and I had to think about how they would look at us. I had to put myself in their shoes. And the most important part of that was to learn how to speak their language, and so I had to learn Russian. Learning another language is the best way that I could think of working with someone else from that country. Over. My name is Catherine. Do you have to wear a spacesuit all the time? Over. Catherine, thank goodness, but no, I do not. <laughs> space is actually are rather uncomfortable. Uh, we have two types. One for launch that we wear inside the spacecraft, and it's a bit more flexible, but it's a rubber suit, basically, with a helmet. And then we have one when we go outside to space to do a spacewalk, and that's much stiffer and very heavy and too bulky. Most of the time, we just wear shorts and shirts. Over. My name is Mia. If you were not an astronaut, what job would you have? Over. Mia, I think I would either be a doctor or I would be uh, a, a businessman trying to launch private people into space. Over. My name is Caitlin. If you could keep one thing from your mission, what would it be? Over. Caitlin, this means this may sound silly to you, but I would keep my memory. The most frustrating thing for me is that when I have a wonderful, beautiful experience, like a spacewalk, and I see the view outside, very quickly the beauty of that event starts to fade from my mind. It's a bit like trying to remember what a beautiful sunset looked like. It tends to fade. Over. My name is Nicholas. What is your favorite part about being an astronaut? Over. Nicholas, I think the best thing about being an astronaut is that you're taking part in a, an adventure, a human adventure, that the United States started and is leading us out towards uh, the moon and then Mars. I don't know if I will get to the moon or Mars in my lifetime, but maybe you will. And the fact that I'm part of that adventure makes me feel very good. Over. My name is Alex. Do stars and planets look different from the ISS than from Earth over... Alex, uh, the stars and planets do look different. They don't twinkle. And the stars in particular um, have different colors that you can see better from space. Uh, they're blue and orange and yellow and green, and you can see those colors here. Uh, the planets have about the same colors as you see from Earth. Over. My name is Riley. What experiments are you doing? Over. Riley, I can't tell you all of them. There's too many. But what I have been doing today is looking at, is melting something that's an analog to a metal, making it get liquid and then solidify again. And the scientists are studying how it solidifies in zero gravity as opposed to on Earth, and whether the material will be stronger or have better properties. They will use what they learn from this to make better materials on Earth. Another experiment I did today was looking at how um, I think called colloid, it's a bit like blood or, or other things, to coagulate in space and what kind of properties um, they assume here in microgravity. Again, it teaches us about how things behave on Earth if we could do these experiments in space. I also have a lot of biological experiments that I do and, uh, of course, we study the Earth. Over. My name is Kenneth. How does the G-force affect your weight during launch? Over. The G-force uh, G really affects us during launch. It um, goes up from about 1.1 .1 our weight all the way up to three times or four times our weight. I weigh about 170 pounds, so it won't that by four times our weight during the worst part of it. Over. My name is Nicole. How did you become interested in being an astronaut? Over. Nicole, I went to a state fair in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. And my American grandma, who used to give me books on space, took me there. And I saw John Glenn's capsule all broken when I was six years old. 
That's what caught my imagination. Over. My name is Jamie. What is the most interesting thing you have learned in space? Over. Jamie, I think the most interesting thing I've learned in space is that the Earth is where I am from and where I belong. I would not want to leave the Earth forever. I want to come back to it. It's a very, very precious place that we have. Over. My name is Brian. How long does it take the ISS to orbit the Earth, and at what speed does it travel? Over. Brian, it takes us about 89 minutes right now to orbit the Earth, and we're traveling at about 25,000 uh, uh, feet per second, or 17,000 miles per hour. Over. My name is Riker. What medical equipment do you have if someone is sick or injured? Over. Riker, we have some great medical equipment. We have a defibrillator that lets people's hearts get started if they stop. uses electricity. We also have oxygen and other systems to help people breathe better. And a whole bunch of medicine. Over. My name is Andy. What did you eat for Thanksgiving? Over. <laughs> Andy, it wasn't that great. It was kind of sliced turkey. It didn't taste really good, like out of a cat. Over. <laughs> My name is Taylor. What are the pros and cons of living in space for so long? Over. The pros, Taylor, are that you get to do something that very, very few people get to do. And you get to understand the Earth and the geography of the Earth, looking down at it very well. And I'm so glad I've done that. The con is being away from my family and missing my children. Over. My name is Adam. What are some of your daily chores? Over. Adam, we have to pick up the trash and put it into rubber bags and take it to the back of the space station where we put it into a space tub that will be deorbited soon. It's called progress. We also have to uh, uh, change out the potty cans. We have potty cans that we use to go to uh, the toilet in space and they fill up every 10 days. And we have to cover those up, make sure there's no smell coming out of them and put those in the back of the station too. We also have to clean the station every Saturday. Over. My name is Catherine. Do you have to steer the ISS? Over. Catherine, we do not normally steer the ISS. Um, it's a very, very sophisticated robot that has automatic systems that do that for us. The ground in general sends the instructions to tell the station where to point. Over. My name is Mia. How do you know what to do while you're up there? Over. Mia, yeah, we get instructions every day from the ground, a long list of them, and a timeline telling us in what sequence we should do all these different things. Sometimes, though, I have free time and I can make up my mind as to what I want to do. Over. My name is Caitlin. What is the temperature inside and outside the ISS? Over. Caitlin, the temperature inside is pretty nice. It's about 70, 75 degrees at the most. Outside, though, you can go all the way from about minus 200 all the way up to about plus 400. Over. My name is Nicholas. How do you wash your clothes? Over. We don't wash our clothes, actually. Um, that's one of the things that we do not recycle. We get those uh, set up to us in the next like, few days, and then we put them into bags and we'll throw them away in the progress. Over. What is the most amazing thing you have seen while in space? Over. LOS? Thank you, Lost of Signal. LOS, loss of signal. So that's the end of it? Yes, All that's right. it. Yeah. It's gone. Okay. It's our 10 minutes. Okay, we got our full 10 minutes. All right, thanks, okay. Frank. An exciting day for some Scottsdale students. Kids at Sonoran Sky Elementary got to talk live with astronauts aboard the International Space Station. 
With a twist of the knob, the turn of the signal, these kids are ready to beam up to space. With the transceiver on the ground and the antenna on the roof, students get ready to contact the International Space Station. And as soon as that white circle gets to where Scottsdale is, we should be able to hear the uh, space station. NA1SS, NA1SS, this is KA7SKY. For teacher Mrs. Cunningham and her students, today is a dream come true. This has been seven years in the making, and we've been postponed so many times, and really weren't even expecting it to happen this year, and just got the call about a week ago from NASA, and they said, you're a go. So from amateur radio station KA7SKY, these kids are ready with questions for the space station crew but first they need a countdown of course three two one yes it's a great pleasure to be talking to your students at Samoan Sky Elementary School today first up sixth grader Andy Spellman why are you chosen for expedition eight over Andy I don't really know there are many factors one was that I had already been at an experienced astronaut and had flown a long duration flight on the space station there and as a result, that gave me qualifications to become the commander of Expedition 8. If you could keep one thing from your mission, what would it be? Over. Oh. This, this, this may sound silly to you, but I would keep my memory. The most frustrating thing for me is that when I have a wonderful, beautiful experience like a spacewalk, and I see the view outside, very quickly the beauty of that event starts to fade from my mind. It's a bit like trying to remember what a beautiful sunset looked like. It tends to fade. Over. That is quite a view. Sonoran Sky Elementary is a member of ARIS. That stands for Amateur Radio on the International Space Station. ARIS is made up of members from each country participating in the space station project. That's great. They finally broke through. Exciting. Cool, that's huh? That's really, they'll remember that forever.